If there's one thing that frustrates me more than premarital sex, it would have to be the fact that everybody stopped using Bebo in 2010 and started using this garbage instead. To give you some background, 2005 was a revolutionary year for the internet and social media. Millions of people were creating accounts for this little website called MySpace, and while it may be irrelevant today, this was the internet's first modern social network. MySpace would dominate the World Wide Web for a couple of years with very little significant competition, until it completely crashed and burned in 2009. MySpace was killed off when another social media site exploded in popularity, and you may have heard of it. It's called Facebook. Ten years later, Facebook is still the most popular social media platform in the world for reasons I will never understand, but it had to conquer a few competitors to earn that position. 2008 was a complicated year for social media. MySpace users were slowly migrating over to Facebook, but somewhere between this transition, another social media site reigned supreme in Ireland and the UK. It was quirky and customizable, and it didn't take itself too seriously. And this forgotten relic of internet history is known as Bebo. If you remember using Bebo back in the day, then you have officially qualified for a veteran's discount. I personally learned how to use the internet in 2008, and Bebo was the hottest trend in my primary school at the time. My friends and I were way too young to use any kind of social media, but we all made Bebo accounts anyway, and that is still on my criminal record. If you started using the internet any time after 2010, then this image probably does nothing for you. But trust me, you missed out on something spectacular. I'm more than happy to explain to you what made the Bebo experience so unique. But where the hell do I begin? When you take a look at a typical Bebo profile, it's easy to see why it was such a hit with children and teenagers. It was an acid trip in the form of a website, but it had so many fun features that kept us all engaged. One particular feature that comes to mind is the flashbox. Basically, you could embed any video you wanted on your profile, which allowed you to express your personality and your interests. But what video did 8-year-old PKMX have in his flashbox? Oh, I'm a gummy bear. You see, some children are gifted prodigies who display creative talent from a young age, and other kids put the gummy bear song in their Bebo flashbox. Another huge attraction on Bebo was whiteboards. Everybody had one on their profile, but the problem was it was open for all your friends to draw on it. Of course, this led to some beautiful illustrations, but can you guess what happens when internet users are allowed to draw whatever they want with no limitations? The greatest part about customization on Bebo was using skins to make your profile stand out from the crowd. Because of Bebo skins, no two profiles were the same and everybody had their own identity. Looking back on it now, I don't think that a single Bebo skin has aged well, but these were in back in the day. But if the skins provided by Bebo weren't your thing, then you can make your own. Everybody had that person in their class who knew how to use MS Paint and made custom skins for all their friends, and I was that guy. This was a time when YouTube also allowed you to make custom backgrounds for your channel, so I was on that graphic design grind as a child. But nothing I made back then ever looked good. A common theme in Bebo skins was cliché inspirational quotes. You know those horrible Facebook posts that everybody shares at the age of 13. Don't judge me until you've walked a day in my shoes. You know my name, not my story. You called me a bitch? Well a bitch is a female dog. Dogs bark. Bark is off a tree. Trees are nature. And nature is beautiful. Just imagine these posts being completely unavoidable on Bebo. So we may have posted cringe on Bebo and lost subscribers, but Bebo also provided some wholesome features like the top 16. This was essentially the original tier list, where you publicly ranked your friends in order of preference, and this was a terrible idea in hindsight. Needless to say, this probably damaged a lot of friendships, but some friendships and relationships were immortalized with the other half feature. Your other half was the closest person in your life, so Bebo users typically selected their romantic partner or their best friend, and it's a shame that I had neither of those. One iconic feature that is synonymous with the Bebo experience is sharing the love. For all my younger viewers, this was how we measured popularity back in my day. Private messaging was never that significant on Bebo, so we had conversations by posting public comments on each other's profiles. Bebo would then give you an option to attach a heart to your comment and increase your friend's love count. The only limitation was that you could gift a maximum of 3 love every day. And this led to some secret agreements. For example, I would make a deal with a friend that I would send him 3 love every day for one week if he did the same. And because of my negotiation skills, I retired from Bebo with a total of 350 love on my profile, which I think is pretty impressive. Speaking of profiles, everybody had a ridiculous username that was impossible to read, and I'm pretty sure that every girl in my school had Justin Bieber in their profile picture. As a naive young child, Bebo made me believe that usernames like this were trendy, 
So I decided to set up my first YouTube channel as XX Matt Rules XX1. I deleted that channel a long time ago, so please don't go searching for it. Bebo was a smash hit with the younger demographic due to its emphasis on fun, customization, and social interaction. My friends and I spent hours on it, and we had such a good time interacting with each other on Bebo. So naturally, we fucking abandoned it in favor of a website that doesn't care about your privacy. Bebo was still relatively popular in 2009, but the word on the street was that this new thing called Facebook was much more enjoyable. When you reflect on the Bebo experience, it's easy to understand why it never really appealed to adults. My grandparents might consider signing up to use this, but I doubt they'll enjoy using a website that looks like this. Facebook was breaking into the mainstream, and the general consensus in my primary school was that Facebook was for grown-ups, and Bebo was for stupid little babies like us. But as time went on, our attitudes changed, we became too cool to use Bebo, and we wanted to join this new website that all our parents were signing up for. By 2010, millions of people had switched over to Facebook, and Bebo just faded into obscurity. Now that I've had almost a decade to contemplate this social media emigration, I strongly believe that we all made a massive mistake. To be fair, Bebo was destined for eventual failure from the very beginning. Its quirkiness and overall aesthetic are symbols of the old internet, when everybody online was illiterate and we all thought that designs like this were socially acceptable. Internet culture grows and develops very quickly, and when a website like Bebo relies so heavily on gimmicks, it will eventually become outdated and will have no place on the modern internet. The death of Bebo was inevitable, but it was still a tragedy. Social media has become a toxic environment, and it's difficult to enjoy using it anymore. Facebook is now a manifestation of political arguments, controversy about privacy, fake news, and minion memes. Sure, Bebo was a cesspool of garbage content that is aged like milk, but it just wanted its users to have some innocuous fun, and controversy was non-existent. So what happened to Bebo? Did it completely die ever since it became irrelevant all those years ago? Well, yes, but actually no. The number of active Bebo users dropped from 10 million in 2010 to 4 in 2013, so Bebo ultimately filed for bankruptcy. However, Bebo returned in 2014 with this horrible emoji hashtag messaging app, but it was not very successful and Bebo died again in 2017. Over the past few years, Bebo has ventured into gaming by developing streaming software and hosting esports tournaments, and they were recently acquired by Twitch, which is very unfortunate. Bebo was not completely dead yet, but according to Wikipedia, they are currently hosting a high school Fortnite league, and I think that is much worse than death. Bebo is now a distant memory, but it will be remembered as a beautiful train wreck of a website that introduced the concept of social media to millions of people. It's a heartbreaking loss to the internet, but on a more optimistic note, it means that our old Bebo pictures are lost forever and they can never come back to humiliate us. Never speak of this again. Here's a little lesson in trickery. This is going down in history. If you wanna be a villain number one, you have to chase a superhero.